Welcome back to Dr. Vipin's classroom. And today we are in Spider, right? So Spider is an integrated development environment for Python, and it gets automatically installed when you install Python through Anaconda, right? If you want to see how to install Anaconda, you can click on the I button, and it will take you to the video lecture where I tell you how to install Anaconda. So how do you open the Spider ID? You can go to your search menu and you can type S P Y D E R. And then you can double click on this. This will open up your Spider integrated development environment for Python. So here we are. We are looking at Spider integrated development environment. And today we are going to do a next level exercise that is going to be determining the sequence composition of a DNA sequence from a FASTA file, right? So I'm sure all of you know what a FASTA file is. But let me just give you a brief on a FASTA file, which is a standard sequence format for the first generation sequencing techniques. And now, of course, we have the FASTQ file. So we'll talk of FASTQ file later. First, we talk of the FASTA format. So let me open the file that we're going to use today. And as I always emphasize, the first thing is that when you start writing a code, first you try your code on a small file. If it is going to work on a small file, it is also going to work on a larger file. So initial file is going to be small. So let's uh, have a look at that. So here we are. We're going to look at a file called dna1.fasta. This is an F partition of my system. It is, if you see, this is your dna1.fasta. So as you can see, this is a simple sequence file. You have the file in FASTA format. The FASTA format will have the first line that begins with the greater than sign. This is called the def line. It will have the definition of the sequence that you are looking at. For example, here it says it is a Rabdapsis Thaliana sequence, right? So it says A dot Thaliana sequence. And then from the second line onwards, you'll have the sequence. And for our simplicity, we are giving only four nucleotides per line. And what you cannot see here, but it's present as the slash n character or the new line character. So the complexity of uh, basically looking at the composition of the DNA through a FASTA file is first, you have to ignore the first line because you may have some characters that may be similar to ATGC. For example, here you have capital A. So this is not to be included as your uh, adenine nucleotide when you're calculating your total adenines. So the first line has to be ignored, which is one complexity. Second, what is important also is that you read the file line by line and then remove the slash and character combine all sequences together to get a single large sequence and then find out how many times A, T, G, and C occur in that sequence. Now coming to the uh, spider. So uh, spider will have three panels. The first panel is here where, where you can write your script or load a pre-written script as I've done here. Then you have the second panel here. In the second panel, you have uh, the variable explorer. So as you declare the variables, uh, you'll be able to see the list of variables here. Then you also have a help section here, and you also have a file section here, right? This is your console area, which is your default output area. So anything you directly print through the program will be shown up here, right? And in our case, we are also going to print and also write to a file. Right? So let's get started. So hash indicates commenting, which means that whatever write next to hash will not be a part of the execution of the program. So if you remember in Google Lab, we had chunks of a program, which means parts of the program that could be independently run. So here also in, in Spider, you can create chunks by indicating the start of the chunk with the sign here. So hash percent percent. So here we are, what are we going to do in this program? We're going to open a FASTA file, read the sequence and determine its composition and the GC content and write it to a new file. So this is the task at hand. So in the first chunk of the program, we are going to open two files, one for reading the data and the other one for writing the output of the analysis. So therefore, we open the two files, one in the R mode, which is the read mode, the other in the W mode, which is the write mode here. So basically, open is the command and the argument to open is the file path and the file name and the mode in which the file is to be opened, right? So for example, here we say file one equals to open, and then we give the file path and file name with the file extension, and we are mentioning that it has to be opened in the read mode. So we say in double quotes, R. Likewise, we have opened a second file, that is called file two, and again, we say file two equals to open, 
and then we mentioned the partition and also the name of the file. So this is the path of the file. It is the net partition, and we're not going to any folder. We're directly opening the file and the F partition. So this is your name of the file is results.txt. And how is this file to be opened? The mode of this file is going to be the right mode. So we put up a comma and in double quotes, we mentioned W and then we close the round bracket so that it corresponds to the opening bracket here, right? So this is uh, your first part where we have opened the file. We've opened two files. First in the read mode, which is file one and second, we have opened a uh, results.txt, which is going to be your write mode file where you're going to write your results. So let's run this chunk and open our file. From the top panel, you have three options. This one is where you can run the current set, right? Then you have the second option where there are double play signs and there you can run the current cell and move on to the next cell. And then you have the third option where you have this I with a play button. And this is basically to within a cell if you want to select a few parts and run that. So that can be done using the I button within an individual cell also. So we play this one here, right? So this is run current cell. You run it and you can see your files have been read. And in the environment area also, you can see file one and file two have come up, which means that these two files have been read. Now we come to the second part of the program where we have to first, you know, ignore the first line of your file that is going to your def line. And second, we need to concatenate all the remaining lines by removing the slash and character. So for that, what we do is we will initialize our flags. We initiate variable count to zero. This is going to help us count whether the first line has been read or not. We are initializing a second variable called sec, and sec is initialized to an empty string. There is nothing in this string, so therefore we have just two quotation marks here, indicating that this is an empty string. Next, what we do is we read the file line by line. So there are two ways of reading a file. You could read a file in one full go and, and store the entire data in the file in one single variable name, or you could read the file line by line. Um, in most cases, when you do a sequence file, we'll be reading the file line by line because there may be some processing that we need to do per line. For example, in this case, we need to word the first line or the definition line. Then we, as we go through the line, we are going to remove the new line characters so that you can get a continuous sequence so when you join these lines together. So lastly, we join all the lines except the def line. So we are taking a loop and we are reading the file line by line. We say for line in file one. File one is your DNA one dot faster file, the one I just showed you. And let me show you one more time. So this is the file we are reading. This file has four lines. The first line is your def line, which has to be ignored. And any character which matches A to G, A to G or C is not to be counted here. But for all the remaining lines that are there, these lines have to be joined together, remove the new line character, and then uh, you know, look for the composition of ATGC. So here we are, we are looking at this file one. So we say for line in file one, right? And then what we do is for every line that is there, we are going to remove the slash and character. So we say line is equal to line dot r strip slash n, right? This removes the new line character. And remember we had initialized count to zero. So once we read the line, we increment the count by a value of one. So count value becomes one when it reads the def line, right? And what we do then now is we re, we put up a condition here. We say if count equals to one, if count is double equal to one means the value of count is equivalent to one. Then in that case, we write simply write the def line to our results file. So we say file two dot write line, right? So which means that you're writing the first uh, def line of your sequence onto the results file. Then we use an else condition. Else means if the count value is not equal to one, which means that you're not on the def line, but on the sequence line. Then in that case, you say sec equals to sec dot upper. So you're converting your sequence into upper case. We are concatenating all the lines together into a uh, empty string called sec. So basically what this line is going to do is to create a single line that contains all these lines together without the new line space, right? So this is what is the logic here to concatenate all lines that are non-def lines into a single string called sec. 
And uh, then, of course, now that you have the sequence, you can do your remaining analysis of composition. So let me run this part first. So here we are, we run this. So now we have uh, the entire sequence without the slashing character into the sec variable name. So we can check the length of the sequence by using the command length. So we say length one is equal to length sec, right? So that's going to give us the sequence length. And then of course we need to write this to the file. So we say file two dot write, which is the command to write into the file that you open in the write mode. So file two is the file that you open in write mode. We say file two dot write. And then we could uh, initially give a slash in character so that uh, the line comes in a new line. Then you say plus, and then you say length of the sequence is in double quote. So this is going to be copied as such and printed into the file. And one important thing in file dot write is that everything has to be a string. So we'll convert whatever we have calculated as a length into a string. So we say plus and we say str and the argument is length one. So in the file, it will be written as a string. And then of course you say plus and slash in. So you give a new line character. So now the cursor to write will be on the next line. So now let me run this chunk first and then uh, we move on to calculating the composition of the DNA. So here we are, we can say, run this chunk, right? Run the current cell and there you go, right? So this is your current cell run that you get. Now we move on and we talk about calculating the composition of the DNA. And for that, as I've explained in any lectures, you can use the for loop, right? So first what we do is we declare a tuple of uh, five characters that is A, T, G, C. And sometimes in the sequence, you may also have a capital N, which indicates that when you put it, at that particular position is not known. So we also keep an N as a character here. So what we've done is we've created a tuple that contains A, T, C, G and N value. So we are also going to calculate the GC composition. So we initiate the counter that is GC equals to zero. Then we take a for loop again and we say for X in nucleotide. So uh, this loop is going to run for five times because there are five values in nucleotide. And the first time the value of X will be A, the next time the value of X will be T, the third time it will be C, the fourth time it will be G, and the fifth time it is going to be N. So what we're doing is we are putting up a loop. We say for X in nucleotide. And we say n underscore count equals to sec dot count x. So we use the dot count method to calculate how many times each of these characters a t g c is coming in our sequence, right? So sequence is where our uh, all concatenated sequence lines are present, and we are counting how many times x, whose value is going to change from a to t to c to g to n. And then, of course, uh, once we calculate how many times uh, an A has come or a T has come or a C has come, we also write it to the file. So here we are, we say file two dot write, and then we say the nucleotide name, that is STRX. So we are writing X as a string, and then we are also giving the count of that particular nucleotide, and which is also to be written as a string. So we say STR and this for count, and then between the nucleotides, we give a tab space. We're now calculating the total GCs in the sequence. So we say GC equals to GC plus N underscore count. And this is only being done if X equals to guanine or X equals to cytosol. So we'll get the GC count here. And then, of course, we are printing also on the terminal the nucleotide and its count in the sequence. Then uh, once you're out of the loop, so now if you see your indentation closes here, which means you're out of the loop. Once you're out of the loop, you could calculate the percentage composition of the GC content. So here we are, we say percent underscore GC equals to GC divided by length percent hundred. So now you are done with your program. You have calculated the ATGC. You've also calculated the GC. The only thing that is left is to write the results of the GC percent. So we say file two dot write slash n, which is basically to add a new line character so that we write this into a new line. And then you say GC content is equal to this is in double quotes and it will be printed as such. And then you say plus. And then you say str percent GC. So you're going to print your 
uh, percent GC as a string into the file. Right? Before leaving the program, you need to close the file. So for example, here we say file one dot close with no argument. Likewise, file two dot close with no arguments. That is going to finish your program now. And now you can see you're done. So as you can see, cell three has been run twice. So this message of length of the sequences will, will be coming twice into your file. We move on and now we run this chunk here. So you say run, run again, and your chunk has been run. And you also have some values here because we're given a print statement to display on the terminal, right? Next, we move on to the last part where we're closing the file. So we close the file one and file two, which is an important part of your finishing the process because otherwise the the uh, material that you want to write to the results file would be still in the buffer. So we close this here. We say run current cell and your program is over now. You have done everything. So let's now see at the results file. So remember your the results file is written as results.txt. So I'm looking for in my F drive, the results.txt file. We had done this part twice. So length of the sequence has come twice. Then it says A is three, T is three, C is three, and G is three. That is N equals to zero. There are no Ns here. And then the DC content of the, of the file is 50%, right? So this is uh, how you can write your results to file. And as I promised, let me just run it one more time so that we don't have a repetition and it looks good. So so before running everything to a start, we we're going to, uh, you know, remove everything from the uh, variables panel. So we say remove all variables, right? We say yes. And now if you see this is clean. We could also take a new console. So we could close this and it will automatically give you a new console, which is in this case, five slash A, right? So it is connecting the kernel and it will give you a new console now. So we are starting absolutely afresh and we are going to rerun the program so that we don't have any errors in the final output that we have. So here we are and uh, you could run by clicking on the top here or you could run by clicking on the chunk and saying shift enter, right? So the first chunk is run, right? You automatically move to the second chunk now. We say again shift enter, right? And you automatically move to the next part here, which is your, which is now highlighted. We run this part, we say shift enter again. And finally, we come to the last part of the program where we run this. So we say shift enter. And then, of course, you need to close the files that you've opened, last part, and we say shift enter again. And now we can check our file one more time. And this time, there is no mistake. You have the first def line, which is a Italian sequence. Length of the sequence is 12. There are three A's, three T, three C, and three G, and there is no N's, right? N equals to zero. And the GC content of the file is 50%, right? So this is how you can open a file, a faster file, and read the sequence, calculate the DNA composition, and also write your results to a new file using the file.write command. So key points to remember one more time. First of course, you have to open the file in read mode and you have to open the output file in write mode. You could also open the file in append mode. You could also open a file where you can read and append simultaneously, right? But uh, we're not going to those complexities for now. Then of course, we uh, move on to read the file and also ensure that the first line is not included in the sequence that we create. And then of course, from the second line onwards, everything is the sequence. So that has been concatenated together. And also what we've done is to remove the new lines. Then of course, we calculate the length of the sequence. And finally, we calculate the individual nucleotides, how many times each nucleotide is coming in the sequence, right? And then of course, we lastly close the file here. So we are closing the file. So that finishes the program for today. In the upcoming episodes, we'll talk about the fastq file as well and how to parse a fastq file using Python and by Python. Thank you very much.